Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. We haven't had a multimeter for quite some time, let alone a Fluke. So we've got the Fluke 17B multimeter, courtesy of Todd from toddfun.com. Thanks, Todd. Uh, you saw this in the mailbag the other day, and it's the cheap ass made in China Fluke, supposedly designed by the Fluke Group, but you know, manufactured to a low price point in China, and it's only marketed and sold in China. Although I um, have seen reports that it has actually gone into India as well. Go figure. But anyway, it's like it's under a hundred bucks delivered or something like that. I think its retail might be slightly uh, more than that, but you can certainly get it on the street. Um, some people have reported even as little as sixty or seventy dollars. And well, curious to see what's inside this thing. Does it live up? to the Fluke reputation. Is it as good as a Fluke 87? Well, there's only one way to find out. You know what we say here on the EEV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. And here it is, and we'll benchmark it against the classic Fluke 87.5, the pretty much the industry standard uh, meter and the, uh, uh, the main meter that uh, Fluke, one of the main meters Fluke made their reputation on and they still do. Let's have a look, tear it down, see what the build quality is like inside because outside it, it feels just like a fluke. It's robust and rugged. The plastic, the quality of plastic feels good. The range switch seems, you know, reasonable. And if we try and have a look at the quality of the plastics here, it, it, the 87 certainly, uh, which is this one here compared to the uh, 17B on the left there, the quality of the plastics it, it just it, oh, you know I'm no plastics expert but uh, from experience the fluke plastic just seems like a, a better like, like it's probably an impact uh, resistant polymer plastic I'm not sure if the 17b is it just seems to be a different type and it's not just the uh, finish either it's all right let's get into the screws here these will be uh, self tappers no doubt, and they certainly feel like self-tappers. There we go. No difference uh, there. Then I don't. Oh yeah, they're a similar thread. We'll compare the threads later. I don't think they're the same as the 87.5 though. But uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that they're using self-tappers there at all. It's good enough for the Fluke 87. So. I guess they figure it's good enough for the 17B made in China. Wouldn't it be ironic if uh, this one actually had nice metal threaded insert screws? Anyway, the 87.5 is quite an old uh, model. This is interesting, actually. I um, just really noticed this. They've got this recess here, which uh, I don't know what's designed to go into there. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything matching on the, uh, oh, that's, okay, no, that's the holder, yep, all right, that's the, uh, just the recess for the magnetic hanger holder in there, which you didn't get with it, by the way, so let's try and open it. I don't think the battery has to come out, so, oh, too easy. Look at that, beautiful. And the initial reaction upon opening this is that they've done a really good job of it for such, you know, a low cost meter. It's certainly, uh, certainly very well laid out and it looks very well built. I mean, it's built down into a price as we'll go into uh, seeing uh, a few things which uh, make that happen. But so they're doing all the right things here. We've got um, HRC fuses, which we'll get into, not as uh, good as the 87, of course, but at least they're there. We've got a um, input protection thermistor, large input protection resistor. Uh, it looks like a high voltage uh, network of uh, 1206 resistors there, all in series. We've got um, MOVs on the input, looks like three of them. I'm not sure if they're all paralleled up. They're probably doing uh, different um, input uh, ranges. And, you know, they've done a reasonably good job. We've got a uh, chip on board, completely uh, epoxy blob there, obviously room for a uh, secondary uh, quad flat pack uh, footprint there. I guess it depends on which one they can get this week 
perhaps, I don't know, if anyone else has a 17B, open it up and let us know if you actually have a QFP footprint device, or maybe that was during development or something like that. And then when they went into uh, high, volume, high volume production, they probably went for the uh, chip on board like that. You can uh, see it's a multi-layer uh, board and uh, you can see the shielding they've put underneath all of the main circuitry up here. Of course, I'm a big fan of the battery uh, contacts directly on like that. That's much better than the uh, nine volt battery snap in the old design uh, Fluke 87. It's really, Fluke 87 is really showing its age there, but you know, they've, there's no wiring uh, in this thing at all, of course, which is excellent. And it's lacking the uh, thick film resistor uh, hybrid, the precision resistor divider, which we'll get into when we look at the uh, 87.5, of course. But that's that's what you'd expect. You know, this is um, you know only a sub hundred dollar class instrument. It's not going to uh, use a um, Fluke's you know high end uh, precision resistor network in it. But they've done a reasonable job. The input jacks aren't uh, nearly as good. Is the 87 which we'll get into but generally at first glance this looks like a very well designed and built hundred dollar class multimeter now i'll start off with the 10 amp fuse here and it is a little fuse uh, branded 11 amp um, hrc fuse with a 20 kilo amp interrupting current and that's uh, the basically the same it's a different brand but it's, uh, it's still a good brand but it's uh, the same as what's used on the fluke 87.5 excellent but if you compare that to the fluke uh, 87.5 here they do actually have um, some blast shields separating that and also uh, keeping it in place from sliding out because there's nothing on the um, 17b here to stop this uh, fuse vibrating loose and actually not making contact it's uh, very unlikely to happen but in theory it's possible. And on the milliamp side, we don't have the same uh, 20 kiloamp interrupting current f fuse as you do on the 87.5. So they have uh, co cut costs there a bit, but it's a uh, Ciba brand, um, fast acting uh, ceramic, uh, 500 milliamp uh, fuse. You know, they're sort of, they're almost high rupture capacity. I don't actually know what the interrupting uh, current of this one is, but it's certainly better than a cheapo glass fuse. More than good enough on this class instrument. Now as for the 10 amp current shunt here, uh, it's pretty ordinary, but I've seen a lot worse. It's uh, certainly not like the uh, tapped one used on the Fluke 87. And you can see the Fluke 87 one down in there. It's just a much nicer implementation of a 10 amp uh, current shunt with the uh, tapped uh, four wire measurement like that coming off the side and for the AC coupling cap it's a Weimar brand MKS thousand volt 10 uh, nanofarad they haven't skimped on the brand there at all and as for the input resistors here they've got uh, five 200k 1206s in series like that the reason they've done that is to uh, give a high voltage resistor instead of using a single one meg resistor they've gone for five 200 k's in series which uh, uh, increases the voltage threshold across the entire resistor so they uh, certainly um, haven't skimped there at all they could have just used the one meg and relied upon the uh, you know the the poor um, uh, voltage uh, breakdown, the creepage distance between a single uh, 1206 like that or two of them or something like that, but no, they've gone to the effort to put five in there. The input thermistor there, I don't recognize the symbol or the brand, it's R112 and the MOVs here are marked TVR911. Once again, uh, not something I recognize but uh, they look like they can do the business and down around this circuitry here we have a linear technology LT 1097 by the looks of it and that's a precision op amp so they've used one of the most expensive brands in the business linear tech they're probably getting it very cheap but uh, still they haven't skimped there and here we have a Texas Instruments uh, 74HC148 a priority encoder there We've got our main crystal over there. What is that? Four megahertz uh, dries the processor. This will, prop, you know, don't ask me what uh, uh, chip they got under there. I got no idea. I 
could attempt to uh, probe it, of course, but that would uh, take quite a significant uh, amount of time. But you could maybe work it out from the uh, pinout if you uh, know your um, various multimeter uh, chipsets. So if anyone wants to have a crack at that and uh, figure out which uh, chipset that possibly is, and uh, which means we can possibly uh, mod this thing, then please go for it. Now this meter um, shows its heritage in the original Fluke 19 from more than a decade ago and that the Fluke 19 was uh, Fluke's first attempt at a Chinese made multimeter and it failed uh, dismally. A, a ton of them out in the field just uh, failed. I don't think there's uh, many left uh, you know, working these days. And um, that I believe um, used to use the chipset out of the Fluke 87. They just leveraged it. Um, but this one is uh, clearly not doing that. So they've used some other, presumably um, off the shelf multimeter chipset. And of course, one of the things you'll notice on this meter is the multitude of trim pots, adjustment trim pots. There's five there and there's another three over here, eight total trim pots. And of course, a uh, meter like the uh, Fluke 87, of course, doesn't have any trim pots at all. It's all electronic uh, uh, closed case calibration and uh, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, this uh, clearly shows it's, um, uh, you know, the hallmarks of, uh, of being, you know, a 50 or $100 class multimeter in that respect. But uh, certainly the solder quality on this thing is uh, first class. I mean, barring the uh, 10 amp current shunt there, but that's um, very, common for these, um, uh, I believe, you know, uh, these uh, nichrome resistors, it's probably a nichrome resistance wire or something like that. So that's very common. It's not actually um, a bad joint on there. That's just the way that they often uh, form on these current shunts, uh, you know. But apart from that, the soldering quality is excellent. The build quality is uh, quite excellent for, you know, this class of instrument, no, you know, well above the pack. So where have they saved cost on this thing? Well, you know, we've seen a few things uh, already in terms of the uh, 500 milliamp fuse there, for example, but the other one is of course the input jacks. And if you take a look at them, they're just, you know, classic uh, one hung low brand, uh, you know, multimeter input jacks. The plastic receptacle here is molded into the main case and there's a uh, threaded metal insert they're of course molded into the uh, plastic itself and they've used a screw there. Um, doesn't look like there's any uh, shake proof washer under that with just the bent metal going down to the PCB at the bottom. Um, and they started this, I believe that's identical to the uh, Fluke uh, 19 of uh, a decade ago. But anyway, that's very synonymous with um, cheap meters. There's nothing in that bad with it, it's, um, but it's not in the same class as the ones on the Fluke 87. And if you take a look at the classic Fluke 87, of course, they have a fully custom uh, input jack uh, molded enclosure like this. That'd be high quality impact resistant polymer or something like that. They've got the O-ring seal around here to keep out uh, dust and uh, moisture from getting into the meter and it you know it really is a different um, class of input jack there and you'll notice the uh, you know the high voltage um, isolation slot cutouts between each connector you know there's no real uh, contest there at all but this is you know and don't get me wrong this is certainly um, adequate and I just took that screw out and it really I had to put a lot of force on that to get that out and then it went snap and then it uh, unscrewed. But um, as I suspected, there is no um, uh, shake proof washer on there at all. But if you have a look at the input jacks down in there, they are a uh, nice solid input jack. They're not actually uh, split like they are on the 87.5 for input jack um, sensing. But they're, uh, you know, they're, they're certainly solid enough, good enough for this uh, price class of instrument. Now you might notice on those uh, what look like gold um, pads there that they're uh, tarnished. They're fairly well tarnished and I've actually scraped away 
a bit of the uh, pad there, and it's certainly much shinier there. And I don't think that's gold plated. I think that might even be uh, bare copper there. That's why it's actually uh, tarnished. And if we compare that with the Fluke 87 5 over here, you can see the gold pads here, but it's got a similar sort of um, bare uh, copper uh, pad there on the boards. Now, of course, another place that they've skimped is the shielding, because you'll notice that there's no removable uh, metal shield on this. There's no uh, spring which comes up to a shielded um, you know, foil uh, insert in the back of the case or anything like that, um, as opposed to the uh, Fluke 87, which we'll show you, although as I pointed out, you can see the, uh, um, the uh, ground plane shielding under on, on the inner layer on the board under all the main circuitry there, but in terms of like just the overall uh, shielding, the input uh, circuitry, it's, um, it's just not there. Whereas the Fluke 87, of course, has the uh, metal shielding on the back like that. And I, I actually don't <laughs> quite know why I'm comparing, you know, this class of instrument, the 87.5 to this, you know, made in China um, one, which is, you know, a uh, quarter or a fifth of the cost or something like that, um, or even uh, less, and uh, and of course doesn't come with a lifetime warranty. But anyway, it gives us a benchmark to what we're uh, comparing to. And they've decided to go with the uh, cheap PCB mounted uh, piezo there, as opposed to the uh, Fluke 87.5, which has you know the beautiful um, piezo ceramic um, buzzer on the back with the nice gold plated spring terminals. Beautiful. And although you can get reasonably loud uh, versions of these, that uh, most likely um, explains the uh, piss weak continuity buzzer in this thing. If you, uh, heard, if you watch the uh, mailbag, I demonstrated that compared to the Fluke 87, no contest. This one's a shocker. And here's a comparison of the two boards side by side. I've ex fully extracted the uh, Fluke 87 five board uh, out of here and of course one thing we're going to look at is the resistor hybrid network here because that is of course what's lacking on virtually all um, you know uh, multimeters in this sort of uh, class you really have to step up to the you know point zero five percent or better you know really expensive uh, class multimeters before you start getting that uh, resistor hybrid there. So, you know, in this case, we've got the uh, trimmers and just, you know, pretty bog standard ordinary stuff. And the 87.5 has uh, Fluke branded uh, stuff there. But if we have a look at the thick film resistor hybrid, there it is. That's actually a precision resistor divider. And uh, these are actually, um, you know, reasonably uh, expensive and well qualified components. And you simply do not find them in the fifty or hundred dollar, even the two hundred, sometimes the two hundred dollar class uh, meters, you you just don't get them, and that's what's missing in the you know seventeen uh, B here. And of course, you would expect it to be missing because that's you know they can't afford to include an expensive precision low drift uh, resistor input divider like that. So because and effectively, you don't need it because the performance you get in one of these 0.5% class multimeters, you can just use all standard parts and your drift is going to be perfectly acceptable. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, not having one of those. I wouldn't have expected one in here and I would have called them crazy overkill if they did use it. Now I've taken the board out, let's have a look at the back side of it. And uh, there's a few things of note here. One is that they've actually uh, greased it up you can see all the grease all around there. So they've obviously decided that uh, they needed to grease this sucker up for good operation. Another interesting thing to note is the shape of the soft button contact pads in there. And if we look at the Fluke 87, five, look at that, they're identical. So that really goes to show you that it does look like the same design team um, using probably the same component library have uh, laid out the Fluke 17 board. So it looks like they, you know, most likely haven't outsourced this thing. It's done by the same group 
as the 875, I would suspect, because that's identical and that's not a coincidence. And that's the locking clip on the back of the range switch on the 875. And if you have a look at the 17B here, very similar construction in terms of the retention clip there. And I've popped it off and you can see all the grease in there and the gold plating on those pads looks uh, decent quality. I don't think they've skimped there. And the back of the uh, range switch is a um, classic uh, to uh, dual contact um, spring arrangement. So let's compare that to the 87.5. Well, the 87.5 is uh, different, of course, being that there's no grease in there, but and the um, uh, contact arrangement is uh, different as well. They use a uh, four uh, leaf terminal system as opposed to the two leaf terminal contact one on the 17B, but Really, I mean, you know, I'm uh, certainly not going to complain about that at all. That rain switch looks pretty good. Clearly, it's a, uh, you know, the Fluke heritage there. It looks pretty much identical in terms of uh, implementation there with the uh, plastic, with the, um, you know, uh, the moving arms on there that sort of snap into the next uh, location. The 87.5, uh, which is the one on the right here, it differs in that it's got a metal, um, uh, insert in the middle there, just a metal post, and uh, the 17B doesn't, so they've, you know, skimped a little bit, but it's a similar arrangement. You can see the same design and the same heritage there. Clearly, this meter is clearly done by the Flute Design Group. But I've got to say that the 87.5 implementation is a nicer one. It just feels a little bit better, but there's, there's not much in it. I mean, the uh, Right, certainly the rain switch on the 17B gets a thumbs up. And the metal inserts on those look deep and uh, these posts feel really solid too. I don't uh, have any problem with those at all. I can't budge those. They feel really nice and well molded. I like it. And in terms of other uh, aspects of the design, they do have a very deep uh, tongue and groove arrangement for the case like that, for uh, blast shielding, for, you know, if the, this thing, uh, if you connect it to a high energy uh, circuit, it's going to, uh, that's going to help really contain the blast so in there. There you have it. That's the Fluke 17B. And what do I think? Well, I'm actually uh, very impressed. This is probably the best built uh, meter in this price class, um, probably by far. And it's not surprising, it's got the Fluke name on it. It's what you'd expect. What would you think of when you were going to buy, you know, a sub $100 Fluke? What would you expect them to get right? Well, Fluke are known, of course, for their legendary um, input protection, you know, safety. And you certainly get that on this. This is a uh, Cat 2 uh, 600 volt, Cat 1 uh, 1000 volt rated input. and the input front end is designed properly and, uh, you know, it's well protected. They haven't skimped there at all. Um, they have skimped on the places you'd expect uh, them to. On this class of instrument, you don't expect the uh, thick film uh, precision resistor hybrid in there. You don't expect any custom fluke uh, parts. They're probably just using an off-the-shelf uh, chipset. Same as uh, everyone else with this uh, same functionality. They're skimped on the buzzer a bit. I uh, don't like that, but you know, um, they're skipped in terms of uh, you know calibration of this thing. There's they're just using off-the-shelf pots. It's probably you know straight out of the app note. This impl implementation for uh, this particular chipset, whichever it, one they're using, skimped a little bit on the 10 amp current shunt and on. Uh, the 500 milliamp fuse, they've skimped a bit on the input jacks isn't as well. There's no, you know, O-ring sealing around the jacks or uh, rubber sealing around the base of the case. And they've left out a true RMS uh, converter as well. That uh, saves them a uh, significant penny on the bill of materials, I'm sure. And of course, they're skimped on the rubber holster. This is really lightweight and flimsy, you know, and it doesn't have the impact protection absorbers in there that the really, you know, much thicker and much uh, stiffer 
five holster has. And that's where they've, um, you know, skimped on the price of this thing. But, you know, and that's exactly what you'd expect when you think of, um, you know, a, a cheap $100 made in China fluke. It delivers exactly as promised. And I like it. It should be. <laughs> should be, don't quote me, but uh, I get a good vibe from this thing. It's all about the vibe. And, uh, you know, I think this will um, last a long time. It's uh, certainly worth the uh, dollar investment. But, um, as you'll probably see in the review, it is poor, very poor uh, bang per buck, this thing. Um, you know, it's a very basic meter. But if you want a very well-built basic meter with that fluke name on the front, it's a winner. So there you go. There's a teardown of the Fluke 17B digital multimeter available only in China and India, I believe. And thanks to Todd from Todd Fund for uh, donating this for the teardown and review. And if you like the uh, teardown, if you like Teardown Tuesday, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EEV Log Forum. The link is below in the description. Catch you next time.